I'm Ash Minnick, and this is Club Auspex. This is the show where we chat with the players from New York by Night and kind of you know go inside their heads and see the unseen, as it were, uh, in talking about the episode that we just saw, which is episode seven. Today is a very special Club Auspex. We're going to talk with all four players, but one table at a time. With me today, I have first Alex Ward and Mayanna Barron. Hi! Hello! Welcome in. Thank you. Bienvenue. Bienvenue. Welcome. Welcome. Bitter. It's a club, so it's, oh. Oh, it's a good time. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. enjoy, I enjoy um, cabaret. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the musical. <laughs> yeah, cabaret is a big hit here at Club Auspex. It's, I'll bet. Yeah. It's a lot of the, pale people. So. It's the vibe we're going for. It tracks. Yeah, it makes sense. So today was a really interesting episode. Yeah. yeah. You guys you split the party. Yeah, all individually, yeah. Yeah. I didn't cool. see yours. So oh, I'm going to learn things. I saw his. Yes. Because I was in the makeup chair, and they were streaming it in there. Yeah. So that was great. And I was in makeup when you went, and yeah. they didn't stream it for <laughs> me. So apparently they like you better. Maybe. Uh, Maybe that's what it was. I think that's what it was. Yeah. yeah I did slip in that 50. That's the problem. when No, that's the problem because I was here in the last campaign, and now I'm the old guy, and there's all these new people here, and they like them better. And oh, it's just no. Like, I don't think that's it at all. No, that's probably not it. But <laughs> anyway, yeah, right. what are we talking about? <laughs> we split the party. Yes, that's right. We, we split, split the party. party. Was, that, was that worrying at all? Were you guys... Were you excited? Um, I'm, I was so happy that Alex got to go first because I because <laughs> I was worried about going first. Um, yeah, no, I, I liked it. I think it's fun to, you know, break it up a little bit and then give everybody a chance to kind of explore little little narratives for themselves and develop and learn different things on their own um, and then come back with that. I think that's good character development. Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, and I, I we, we had done similar stuff like this on LA by night where we've had some little individual things and stuff like that. So that was, that was, it was fun to get to do it with a new character. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I didn't know if you knew this, Alex was on the show before. I had heard yeah, whisperings yeah. of this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know if anyone You knew. look familiar, anyone but. Watched. Yeah. He does look different. Uh, yeah. So I, I wasn't sure. I do. Like, hair now. twin? <laughs> yeah, I have a brother. He looks yeah. almost like me, but with hair. But like. <laughs> um, um, but you guys, you both did get to explore your characters, yes. which was really fun. Mm -hmm. um, Alex, you do this, but Mayanna, both of y'all got a little beastie, as it were. Oh, did we? We yeah. got a little, we got a little, little feisty. We got, the oh my gosh, of course. Well, um, so I went with my little thin blood friend that oh, yeah. I befriended from the yes, club. Yes, yes, uh, man, I should have killed him the last game. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? You were trying yeah. to kill him? No, like I almost did in LA by Night. Oh, it's oh right, because he's a returning. Yeah, oh, yeah. well, thank Jasper you. Jasper almost killed him. In Thanks Alabama. for yeah. not killing him. Yeah, I'm I'm glad. Then so that I could learn. Yeah. So lessons. We did some blood alchemy. Ooh. We painted a really pretty sun, with a bunch of bloody hands on it. Ooh. And yeah. and I think Francis has a crush on me now, and I don't know what to do with. I don't know how to deal with that. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted a friend. Uh, isn't that how it always happens? Though? I know. <laughs> Seraph has that effect on people. That's true. In general, uh, interacting with the beast, what is what, how does that feel? Because it's you know it's it is Jason playing an NPC mm -hmm. sort of, but it's very different than the other ones. Mm -hmm. So how how does that differ with how you um, speak to that at the table? I mean, I've always interpreted the way that happens is that obviously, yeah, we talk about the beast inside, but it's it's basically. A, it's an internal monologue that you're having. It's like an int it's like intrusive thoughts mm -hmm. that come into your head that just there aren't yours. They're just random these thoughts that come in, and then the the talk back that happens all you know in interior. It's not you know out loud. No one hears that happen yeah. except for Xander, um, oh. who once answered my beast, <laughs> which was excellent. Um, but <laughs> only he can do that. Um, but uh, yeah, it was. Um, that, I like that dynamic. It's one of my favorite things about the game we play is that yeah. dynamic of the beast when, because it's not in the rule book. It's just something that Jason, in his uh, glorious experience of being a DM or a storyteller for us, um, is that he does this. It's a cool little thing that just exists. And uh, it's one of my favorite things we do on the show. Well, it's canon now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like the fact that it's something that gives you, I, I like anything that gives you additional like character or flavor dynamics, mm -hmm. regardless of if it like drives the plot or not. I think it's just something that's really engaging. And as a player, I just love hearing all of the different beast characterizations that exist because 
yeah, it's just it's it's a very fun, very immersive part of the experience. Yeah. Really. I'm nosy and I want to know about other people's characters. Well, so that as too, soon as a so. voice comes out, I'm like, who's that guy? Yeah. Who's that? I want to know who that is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is fun and yours changes, so that's even yeah. more interesting. Yeah. Which is yeah. really fun and I'm yeah. very much looking forward to when people understand why that happens. Ooh. Yeah, and you guys, I mean, you guys have now played uh, seven sessions. Yes. Um, I know this one you didn't necessarily play together, but you've gone through almost an entire season. You've got to see each other's characters grow and, you know, get to know each other as players as well as characters. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask you a, sort of an opposite of the beast type question, which is just some niceties. I wanna know, I want, I want you guys to look at, look at each other in the eye, and I wanna know what you enjoy about the other person's character. Ah. <gasps> oh my God. I, I'll go first. Okay. Oh my God. I think Isaac, I think your, your choices as an actor are just so impeccable. Like obviously like I see the craft, I see like the specificity, I see, just I love the accent. I love the mm. styling. I just think Isaac is is just a fascinating person. At any time he talks or any time he does something, I, I'm I'm as an as a player fascinated, and I think Seraph is also <laughs> equally fascinated. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> uh, I love Seraph as a concept in that it's you created you went mm, how do I want to say this? You went into this game creating something that is effectively immortal unless outside forces cause it to die. Mm. And you went, great, that means it's fun forever. <laughs> As a character, the character was like, great, we just get to have fun all the time at night. Yeah. And, you know, coming from you as a tagger, being awake at night, going out in the middle of the night, you're, you know, it's like, great, I just, my normal lifestyle keeps going and I get to have fun all the time. And then immediately just slamming into the big wall that goes, no, that's not what happens. <laughs> that you don't get to have fun almost ever. And so, like, <laughs> which is, it was such a heartbreaking core piece of this character that I loved so much. Oh my like, God. such a great thing to bring into the game. I remember, and, yeah. And just a, a different way to show innocence in a character than we've done before. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm so glad. I remember like Jason gave a description of the club and like us like living in this moment where like, oh, and it could last forever. And I was like, oh, this is nice. I hope it stays like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole show, y'all clubbing. That's it. Some <laughs> nice times. Yeah, this is, I think this is the first time in the history of the any of our vampire shows that we've gone to a club and most of the coterie hasn't gone dancing. At <laughs> <laughs> this time, only one of us went dancing. <laughs> in any time we've gone dancing. to uh, that place that I can't remember the name of right now. <laughs> y'all can dance here. Doesn't no. It? Nope, okay. Diana's into it. Um, speaking of character creation yes. and working with Jason, there was also some really interesting stuff. Um, I So I would love if we could chat a little bit about the mechanics of leveling up. Because oh. y'all are leveling up as the season yes. progresses. And we don't do that on camera, so. Yeah, and but you find really interesting ways to make it part of the story. Mm -hmm. um, there was obviously a very big level up for Isaac right. mm -hmm. in this um, episode. Yeah. So how did y'all decide how that was going to happen? Well, uh, the, the discipline that allows Isaac to do that, which is called vicissitude, is something is uh, is really only really available, mm -hmm. generally speaking, to the specific clan that Isaac is. Mm -hmm. And so it is something that I... and. Be this being my favorite clan, I've always wanted to explore this. I've never really gotten the chance. So when I was coming up with Isaac, when I was talking to Jason, um, I very much wanted to, among, um, among the plethora of other ideas that didn't make it into Isaac, um, there was this idea that I wanted it to manifest. I didn't want to have it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be something that, because the way I personally look at vampires in this world, they develop the way their disciplines develop, and because of the way fifth edition has have these has this branching path for disciplines instead of just like level one, level two, level three, like it used to have. It feels to me more real if a kindred reacts to the situations that it encounters by developing disciplines in a certain way. So it's and it's the same thing I did with Jasper in that like depending on what happens to the character, that is how I follow the disciplines and how I explore as though the body is reacting to what is happening around it. So I wanted it to manifest in a certain way when I was mm -hmm. using my lower level powers to at one point in a very, you know, a tense situation or wherever Jason deemed it to be uh, right, it would manifest in a certain way and that would allow me to then follow that path down. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's pretty fascinating. I think 
is one of the things I love about this show is that everything is so story based. Even though there there is this whole layer of mechanics yeah. over it with the game, it just comes out in character. And I mean, obviously, Alex is is a veteran. He's done this before. But Mayana, being new to playing vampire uh, in this way, has how has that been for you? Being more, um, have you felt more like? I want to say engrossed, but I don't think that's the word. I mean, I definitely, I mean, I definitely feel engrossed uh, <laughs> or embraced. But um, yeah, I, 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 I watched a lot of the show, you know, especially after I'd been cast because I wanted to do research and stuff. And I saw how how the players in that show, you know, integrated their different abilities and and you know and tried to to keep things within the narrative. Like I think the the they describe it as like LARP top. So it's mm -hmm. like there's you know, role play always being at the forefront of the experience, which I think is really cool, and, and I like that as a, as a thing. So I always tried to figure out ways of, like, how do I reveal information? How do I reveal ability that feels justified and, and would logically make sense for this, this character that I'm playing? Of, like, she's not just going to do every ability every time. Like, she's not going to just, like be the most at every opportunity like there's there's different that's places job. yeah that's <laughs> very much so it's like you have to slot in the different building blocks where it makes sense so i think being able to i mean i'm learning so much from all of the wonderful other other cast members as well of like oh that was a really cool choice that they made i'm like how do i how do i learn from from them as well yeah yeah well before we wrap up and go to your your counterparts at the other table <laughs> Which will also just be right here. Great. Magic. Um, kept it warm for somebody. So let's see. What are your, let's, let's project into the future. What are your predictions mm. for the finale? Where would you like to see these characters go? In Do you have any personal goals that are maybe different than your character's goals? <sighs> Answer every I'll, I'll go first. <laughs> I, I think um, I just, I really want to see us come together as a coterie. I really mm -hmm. want to feel like we get to a point where we, you know, see the value in each other, and and there and there feels to be that camaraderie. Um, I what? <laughs> and That's a nice thought. I, I, I hoped. I a kid can dream. Um, and then I I do want to see like. <sighs> and then just go hang in clubs and dance. Yeah, yeah. I would love to go back to the club and dance and not have to do any more jobs or anything. Um, I think I think I also I want to learn more about about Isaac. I, I think Isaac is the character who I think is still shrouded in the most mystery. Mm -hmm. So. Any chance I get to, to learn more about, about him, and it, it, I, I, again, I just find the character super fascinating. So that's just like, as a player, I'm always like, yes, more, more uh, story. Yeah, uh, I, also, I mean, also, narratively speaking, like ja or Jasper, whew, uh, Isaac, for reasons, um, for multiple reasons, wants everybody to come back together. Um, he has, there's things they still need to do, and he's done one of the jobs that we needed to do, but he can't do all of them on his own, so he desperately needs help from other people to complete these things, but also, he, um, he, I would like to see, um, let's see, I would really like it if, I'm more, see, I never plan ahead, this is the thing, like, I, I don't, I, I'm so excited to see what Jason has in store for the last episode, because it's the last episode of the season, and yeah. something always happens, <laughs> and, um, I, so I, I, I know I, I mentioned it a couple, I, a couple episodes ago, I mentioned, um, getting them some more information, trying to clear up any of the questions I had, so hopefully we can get to that and um, and get them some answers for things they need uh, because Isaac doesn't want to have to answer questions anymore <laughs> or get blamed for not answering questions that they didn't ask. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's kind of where I want to, we do need to, get, we need to take what we've learned from these little individual things and then bring them back together and then awkwardly slam that information into each other and try and make a story out of it. Like so. a sandwich. Yeah, made of like... An awkward sandwich. An awkward of, like of information. Sandwich. Clap together like that. That's, clap that sandwich. That is a coterie. An yeah. awkward information sandwich, sandwich that gets clapped together. Well, thank you both <gasps> for joining us thank in this... You're the, welcome. The seventh episode of Club Aspects. Uh, it was amazing. Looking Very much looking forward to the fin finale. Me too. Me too. Um, yeah, so let's, let's switch over to our other table and see what they have to say. Dance, 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 dance. <laughs> and now it's time for Joy Rasul and Abria Iyengar. Yay! Let's go! Sorry, I'm yelling our God shit name. God dang it. Immediately. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, man. I never forget. I think, I think Rego sunk. 
think the ship sunk. Um, excuse me? When? Where? What did I miss? What did, what did you do in your scene? Uh, well, you nothing. weren't in it, so. Oh, um, well. <laughs> uh, I assumed it was just pining about Margo. I wasn't, I wasn't prepped to talk about Rago, I'll be honest. I, That's fair. Yeah. Yep. We didn't, so we, we didn't really get to watch each other's scenes. Yeah. Before, so you are our conduit for finding out what, what happened, happened in each other's scenes. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's really funny though, is that the audio on the stream went out during your scene, so I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, uh, Excellent. I will say though, let's start with the obvious, uh, which you both did, you saw each other though. So you saw what each other was wearing. Can we talk about wardrobe? Can we talk yep. about that like, suit? My yes, dog. yes. Sir. So. Okay, we, we can start there. Yeah, so um, I brought in a bunch of stuff uh, for Ray to begin with and you know, like we did uh, camera tests of like what looks good and all that and then I had a bunch of like gray and silver and uh, Mayana was monopolizing the purple a little bit. Ooh. Um, but that. then I was like, oh, okay, so I have this uh, jacket. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to use it. And then it became this kind of one day uh, meeting the Camarilla thing. And I was like, okay, well maybe this, maybe this becomes the Camarilla jacket. Maybe this becomes the like- the Cam jacket. Yeah, and it has this kind jacket of like- of betrayal. Feeling of like, <laughs> the jacket of betrayal. Wait, did you so, betray like, us? What? What? No, no. I spent what? my entire scene pining over Fuego. Thank you. Um, the betrayal was that Fuego. He did. He feels betrayed. Yeah. That because he loves you so much. Good. <laughs> but it just because it is a little. It's a little flashy and a little ostentatious, and it's not a. It's not a subtle jacket. So it became this thing of like. Uh, almost going into the Camarilla in a way of like, almost showing what the Bronx, like being in the Bronx for a year has done, but I'm like, I'm still me, but it did change. But uh, so, you know, kind of trying to give a little bit of an air of, Ray is different from when you all saw him a year ago. Yeah, point and he's back in the Bronx. Mm. So. Well, so, he, I mean, he, as a character, left the Bronx when he was like 12 years old. Or, no, not 12. He left after school. Was 12-year-old Ray flashy? Uh, no, he was like a, a studious kid who like saw school as his way out oh. of the Bronx. And like all of his friends are like, yeah, I'm going to get out of the Bronx doing music. And I'm just like, you go, buddy. <laughs> oh. uh, and, and yeah, he, he didn't have like, he doesn't have a lot of respect for that. He doesn't yeah. have a lot of, because he feels like he, you know, had to claw to get his way yeah. out of the Bronx. And then, you know, we haven't really delved into what happened when, you know, he was alive and tried to come back. Maybe we'll touch on that uh, one day. One day. Oh, God. Abria, also yeah. since since your last visit to Club Aspects, yes. um, you're, you're bringing out some pretty cool oh my God, accessories so as well. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, when uh, when I we were first starting to like figure out what the characters were going to look like, uh, I got some like you know the cool like little Halloween store uh, spirit Halloween vampire fangs, <laughs> and suffering fuck dash. I could not <laughs> found normal at all <laughs> wearing them. So I kept trying to figure out like what's something that like has the sort of cadence of like fangs and draws your eyes to. Mm -hmm. Her mouth, which is the source of her power, and then found this like very cool accessory online. Bought it twice, and then was like, "Okay, you look like a show pony now. This is cool. Maybe Fuego let's wear the it." Show pony. Fuego the show pony. Fuego the show pony. She's a lip designer. She's like gonna try it. And Ray in his betrayal jacket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't spell betrayal without Ray. Oh no! <sighs> oh Man. no! We anyway, saw, we knew it was coming. We set it up early. I do want to say though, I think it's very cool that like uh, Fuego's like thing for this episode was having the blood tears, which I always thought was like the coolest thing yeah. in Vampire. That like that's true. Like if they cry, they cry blood. That's just what it is. Yeah. And with such a signature idea, and I think in a sort of like parallel to Ray going and wearing like his flashiest jacket in this private moment away from the coterie, sort of being a different version of himself when the rest of the group isn't around. 
Fuego like giving into her emotions in like a very visible way, something she would try hard not to do in front of the coterie. Yeah. She just still isn't quite sure where she stands with them and how she feels about them, but could open herself up to like a visually impactful moment in a safe space away away from the group. And I think like in very different ways, they were still kind of communicating the same idea. Yeah. And that's cool and good for us for doing that <laughs> on purpose like we planned. <laughs> But no, that is true, though. You sort of, you, we got to see a bit more of each of those characters, at, you know, outside of the coterie. And and I also find it really fascinating because, you know, both of your characters are newer to being dead. <laughs> um, and I love watching them learn about what they are yeah. because they both kind of come from a place that no one, you know, sat them down and was like, these are the rules. Um, and so, for instance, Ray uh, with the, the cigarette, scene I thought was really interesting. Yeah. He said, I didn't know we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Although, like, I do like that uh, as mechanically it takes rousing the blood, which means that you might get hungrier every time you do it. So if you're like a pack a day a pers per kind of person, oh, that's, no. uh, that's a real dangerous night. <laughs> Is Ray a pack a day person? No, uh, okay. Ray, Ray wasn't that bad. And Ray. Pack a day Ray? Ray that's was what more. They call it. Uh, uh, more had a problem with cigars than cigarettes, mm. but it mechanically is all kind of, you know, slaking the uh, lust the same way. Mm. Yeah, that's fun. And then um, on the on the other side, uh, Fuego Margot yeah. is uh, she's it kind of a I don't want to say a sponge so much as just constantly asking questions. Yeah. Uh, what has been your favorite thing that to learn in character? Oh man. Uh, I super enjoy uh, Fuego's sort of learning about like what different clans are like. Mm -hmm. I think in her brain and in mine, uh, it's doing this very fun astrology thing of like, oh, that's a very Virgo thing to say. <laughs> like, oh, all yeah. gang girl are like, what? Like, <laughs> there's just something very fun about this like prescribed sense of like, I guess it is innate because you're like born into this other life and like this this sense of like here's this determinist aspect to being offered eternity mm -hmm. and it's such a it's such a fun little thing to like alight on and I think that's beyond uh, her immediate concerns for like what do I need to know to keep myself from getting uh, killed mm -hmm. in these streets she's just sort of endlessly fascinated with like the permutations of like different kinds of kindred. So every time she hears something new about a different clan or a different like power set, she's like, oh, that's great. Yeah, Can I have that. Is that in my like star chart? Like, how do I be a part of that, though? <laughs> um, that is kind of fun to think of it as horoscopes. Yeah. Um, I, so I'll be a little conduity for you. Both of y'all in your stories kind of revisited your past or um, went back to, you know, it was it was like you were trying to reach out to your human life a bit, yeah. but for very different reasons. Could we elucidate uh, what, what were each of your characters reasoning for trying to get back to that? Oh yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think the, like, the very simple answer is uh, it was a mechanical problem of like, okay, we're gonna have to resolve the sort of like humanity uh, threat that the choices I made in a previous episode yielded results that had to be dealt with. Rude, I hate consequences, could you imagine? Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I love a world in which uh, the sort of stated characterization for Fuego is that she's this like part of the community, everyone is family. Uh, she was grown, she was acculturated in such like a deeply humanist idea mm -hmm. that yeah, she just, she, I, don't, I just don't think she knows how to not be that. And the threat of somehow losing something that is such a core pillar of personality to her mm -hmm. in this like mechanical way and like a choice way, like was just so devastating and exciting. And oh God, it was, it was cool. I stand by it, that was great. And I was freaking out the entire time. <laughs> I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> I think I think you did. I think you did. I feel like that was the a little different than Ray's reasoning. Well, though. actually, I like the parallels to it because Look mine kind of came from a mechanical need as well because mm. I had aggravated willpower damage from the last episode, oh, yeah. and 
the only way to heal that was to push towards my ambition, Ooh. which is to get back into Manhattan and be accepted into some facsimile of my old life. Oh. Uh, so I had to make progress towards that to gain that willpower back. I love it and when mechanics uh, push a character choice. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, and it, it just it, and I love how you both embraced that and didn't make them just mechanics. They were yeah. motivations. When mm. system serves story, it's just so God, it's so good. Can we take a second to talk about how great you both are? Oh my God. Um, Is that not what we were? I I, <laughs> I asked this, I asked this over your your, uh, your colleagues as well, and I would like you guys to tell each other what you like about each other's characters. Oh my gosh, how long do you have? Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> summarize, you can so summarize. Here's the thing, here's the thing. Tell me how great I <laughs> thought about how much of a slow burn this game was gonna be, and I was like, got to sit down next to the amazing Abria, and like, <laughs> early on, early on, she was so unafraid to make such strong, bold decisions as a player, and then as a character, immediately regret them, <laughs> which is such a such a dichotomy <laughs> that it's like, how, you, how are you this good of a player, but then also this good of a character at the same time? Oh my God, thank you. When you say it like yeah. that, it does sound a little bit like the character is like, oh, why, no, why? 100%. <laughs> I make choices, I'm like, this what is, am I wrong? This problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. can I can I compliment back now? Yeah, yes. of course. Okay. Well, like, I, like, I set you up for it. So just, oh my God, yes. You know, okay, just... so here's the thing. You came in and I think, yeah, I, I love having a character that's sort of out of the gate. Like, hey, my backstory is not the interesting thing. It's what you do once everyone knows it. So I'm going to come in screaming it. Mm -hmm. And you built this like beautiful fortress of a character. And I was like, oh, I built that sort of nosy family community bully. I'm going to pick on you mm. the entire time. And it, it was just so lovely to have a character that like had every reason in the world to have so many defenses up and every like choice to be withholding and uh, a little off-putting. Like it's just so meticulously crafted and it becomes like this sort of puzzle in the middle of the gameplay of like, what's the thing I can do that Margot can like needle Ray in a way that someone who deeply cares about someone and wants to know them better. And like, even if it causes him to blow up, an emotion is something, indifference yeah. is death. And uh, man, even even beyond like our characters, like vibes, every, it's, to me, I think you are playing like what I think of when I think of like power gamey, like, cool vampires of just like that cold what? command truly Stop. a badass like always at the edge of like something disastrous happening and you court disaster so gloriously that like i feel myself slipping into like my my gm brain going like this is the player you want at the table 100 percent of the time that's like made a big strong choice that doesn't like that knows how to hold focus without pulling it unnecessarily and then when the spotlight is handed you deliver every time and it's so good and it feels good at the table with you I, I know it feels good to watch like it's just very cool you're incredible and I'm oh so God, angry this kidding. is the first time I we're playing again. together it's so much love I love it I love it <laughs> so yeah, I agree with everyone. it's all true it's all true okay so to wrap up projections what is going to happen in the finale what do you want to happen oh, what do you want to happen that maybe your character doesn't want oh I, so I have a hard time like sussing out like whether I chase what I want, what the story wants, or what my character wants, yeah. and like back and forth on all of those. But can I just roll a crit for once? Oh my god! Can I just like one, one crit? It's I, not up to me. I have. I don't know why you're. I have asking. not yet. Your dice are. I have not so yet rolled mean. a crit. <laughs> They're so mean. I'll have a conversation with them. Yeah. yeah Meanwhile, I watch Alex go. Nine successes. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if you know this. Alex has been on the show before. He's done this before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man. Okay, I know this is going to be so weird and like meta going into the finale, but I do feel like okay. I love 
I love whatever the hell Rego is. And I just, I'm hoping against hope that like it comes to a head in some kind of interesting way. Cause I think there was like that initial, like, what is this? And then like a sort of pumping of the brakes in both directions. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, I, I just hope that we can like finagle a moment in which they like have that big, like, like, I, I love a will they, won't they? We could do this for like six yeah. seasons. It's fine. But just having just some sort of. with vampires. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's moon moonlighting. There you go. I mean... Perfect. It writes itself. <laughs> uh, but just some sort of like definitive like moment for them mm -hmm. to like carry through till we see them again. So that's my goal. I'm sorry I said it right in front of you. I so. Mean... <sighs> love how different your goals are. I want to roll well. Oh, sure. Yeah. I want romance. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you both so much for joining us. Hey. This was lovely. Um, thank you all for joining us for the seventh episode of Club Auspects. Tune in after the finale, for just watch the finale, and then watch the Club Auspects finale. It's, yeah. it's our finale, too. Um, but yeah, thank you, everybody. See ya. <laughs>